The next control group down is for the gather description. Now you may remember in a previous video I turned that off. By default, it's usually on. So you can turn that off and on uh, by using this first checkbox, display gallery description. Um, and this is where you can input some text to describe the contents of your gallery if you want people to know uh, something about the shoot, about the location, uh, whatever. You want to give the, the gallery a title. Uh, you can control the content here using this array of checkboxes. So what it supports in full is a title, a subtitle, and then you've got paragraphs, which you can turn the, all of them off if you just want to use the title and that's it. You can get rid of all the paragraphs very easily by disabling that checkbox. Or you can go ahead and you can enable up to three paragraphs. Now if you don't want to use a subtitle, you don't use a title, you can just go ahead and turn those off and on using the checkboxes. Um, there are two ways to change the actual copy of these items. You can either come in here and click on uh, each field individually. So I'm going to go ahead and call this Spaghetti Western because that's what this design looks like so far. And you can see it's changed my title text. Or you can click directly on the text you want to change. So you can change that entire paragraph by clicking on it or the title by clicking on it. So uh, for a subtitle, I'm going to say this is a demonstration template for high slide tutorial. And it updates the content. Uh, it also has support for an image. So if I wanted to, I could tick this image box and uh, right now I don't have any images selected, so it's giving me a, a blank image indicator. But let's uh, go ahead and bring in Mega Man by selecting him in our film strip. So I now have Mega Man in my gallery. I also have Mega Man here in my gallery description box. Um, so while I've got the... well, let's uh, select some additional images. I'm going to bring in five images for my gallery. And the way that you control uh, which image appears here in your gallery description is using this slider, Get Image ID. By default, it's set to 1. So 1 is going to be the first image in your film strip. The next image in your film strip is 2, and then 3, and then 4, and then 5, and so on. So it's very easy to, uh, to quickly grab an image. You don't need to mess with file names. You just call it in by number. So if I wanted to use, for example, this image of myself for my gallery description, I would go ahead and see that it's the third image in my film strip. I would set my image ID to 3. And uh, in this case, it's easier to type the number than it is to use the slider because the range on the slider is really huge, and so it's difficult to nail a specific number. Um, you can also change the image source. Right now, it is using the large version of that photo. If instead I'd like to use the thumbnail version, I go ahead and I change the image source to thumbnail. Uh, as you can see, it's still large, but that's because of a slider. Uh, it's gotten much lower resolution because before, where I was taking a large image and making it smaller, I'm now taking a small image and making it larger. So let's skim down the controls and fix the size of that image. Down here in the sliders, we have a slider for constrain image size and uh, this lets you change the size of that image so I'm gonna make that much smaller so it doesn't look like a pixelated piece of garbage and then there's also a uh, an option here for image alignment so by default it's set to center but you can set that left or right and your text will wrap around that image um, you can also use the image border slider to add a border to that image And coming back up to, uh, here we go, the color selectors, there's the border color, which will change the color of the border around the box as well as the border color for the image. So for now, I'm going to set that to black. 
And uh, those are the image controls for the gallery description. So let's take a look at some of the text. Um, like I said, you've got the title and the subtitle. Then you have this image alt tag, which is there purely for uh, search engine optimization. This is the text that search engines will associate with this image here in your gallery description. So I'm just going to, since it's a picture of me, actually, you know what? Let's go back and make that a picture of Mega Man. And for the image alt text, I'm going to type in Mega Man because that tells the search engines what that image is. Um, if you wanted to change the paragraphs, you could go ahead and do that. I'm going to leave them alone to save some time. Coming down to the color controls, you have individual control over the uh, color of the title, the subtitle, and the description text used for paragraphs. You can also change the color of the box and the box border. So let's go ahead and choose a color. Uh, I'm going to make this and again, I might change this later when you're not looking, but for now, we're going to make it that sort of eggshell cream color, which obviously my text is now too difficult to read. So I'm going to change my description color to uh, not quite black, but a very dark, almost gray black. My title color is going to be the same as my header. I'm going to use that red. So I could sample that from up there, but because I want to be very precise, I'm going to dial in the hex. And then uh, my subtitle color, we will use the drab green. So now I have my colors dialed in. Um, I can go ahead and change my fonts individually for the titles and the description. So for titles, I'm going to use a strong impact font, and the description I'm going to leave uh, using Helvetica styles. Uh, the titles can be set to normal or bold. They can be aligned separately from your paragraphs, so I can stick those to the left, the right, whatever. I can then change the paragraph alignment on its own, so that's center. I'm going to make it justify for right now. And I'm going to stick my titles, oops, leave the normal, stick them to the right and I'm going to then use my sliders to increase the font sizes. So my titles are going to be 24 pixels, which is a pretty nice size. I'm going to change my subtitles, make them 18. My description font size, I'm going to increase to 14. There we go. Finally, the subtitle caught up with us. So that's now 18 pixels. Um, the other sliders, we have inner padding, which affects the amount of padding inside the box. So it's 20 by default. You can make that larger and it will readjust after a moment. Or you can make it smaller. You could take it down to 10 pixels, for example, and then wait for it to readjust again. Personally, I like it large for this design. So I'm going to set it to about 25. <clears throat> You also have uh, control over the border. So I'm just going to actually get rid of the border completely for now. Again, I might come back and change this later when you're not looking. And for browsers that support CSS round corners, you can uh, round off your corners using this slider here. Now this won't appear in older browsers. It may not appear in some versions of Internet Explorer. But in Safari, Firefox, Chrome, and most newer browsers, uh, CSS round corners work very well and can be a really nice effect to sort of take the hard edges off of your boxes. So that is the gallery description. Uh, pretty straightforward stuff.